Here at Lost Creek, we are fortunate to have an abundant supply of water. Natural springs and a small creek provide a clean, constant flow, creating this high-quality pond. A quality pond is essentially a self-contained micro-ecosystem. The health of that system depends on a complex set of variables, such as water purity, oxygen levels, the food web, and aquatic plant life. A quality pond can provide an assortment of recreational activities, such as kayaking, swimming, and fishing. A healthy, well-balanced pond can also provide excellent habitat for many species of fish, reptiles, and amphibians. As well as a wide variety of terrestrial creatures including waterfowl, mammals, and birds of prey. As long as all the variables are balanced, the system will function optimally and all will thrive. But if the balance is disturbed, such as by an invasive species, the system can quickly break down. One of those invasive species is an aquatic plant that originates in Asia called hydrilla. It has become a serious problem that is choking our waterways across the country and all over the world. It is shade tolerant, allowing it to grow in deeper water than native plants, and proliferates quickly, allowing it to rapidly take over a water system and displace the native plants. As you can see here, it forms dense mats of vegetation that can become so thick that swimming, kayaking, or even fishing can become impossible. Larger fish have trouble navigating the dense mats, which can greatly reduce their habitat. And it can use up the oxygen in a slow-moving body of water, resulting in fish kills. Hydrilla in itself is not a bad plant. If kept in check, it can play a vital role in an aquatic ecosystem, providing food, shelter, and habitat for many creatures. If you look close, you will see tiny invertebrates clinging to the hydrilla. They are called hydra, and they use the hydrilla as an anchor as they float their tentacles out into the current to grab and feed on passing zooplankton. It provides a safe habitat for minnows and newly hatched fry to escape predators. and is an essential food source for a variety of waterfowl containing high amounts of minerals and nutrients. It is also a favorite food for our two species of turtles here at Lost Creek. So now that we know that we have to control it, let's talk about some of the ways it can be done. One way is to use an herbicide that kills the plant. The drawback is that after you kill the plant, it still has to be removed. Otherwise, the decomposing material can cause toxic conditions. Herbicides are limited to low or zero flow conditions and can be expensive. 
Second option is to introduce sterile grass carp that eat the plants. But their use is restricted to bodies of water with no outlet. Both options also do not target hydrilla alone and can result in destruction of native plant species. The third option is mechanical removal. Since my control options were pretty much limited to mechanical removal, I decided to go with a weed rake. And uh, I picked this up online and I've been using it for a couple of seasons now and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, it comes with this short rope attached and I recommend using some tape to keep it in the center of this yoke because it will slide down and then it just tangles up as, as you throw it out there. So, it's a little tricky. It takes a little practice. But I found the best way to do it is just keep all, you have to tie it off to your wrist over here so you don't lose it. And keep your slack all over on the side here. And kind of give it a big old arc and at the last second pull it on the rope so it jerks it and kind of keeps the rope from getting tangled in the tines. That was a good throw. And then slowly drag it in. And it catches on a root. Uh, yeah, there is some roots right here now that I remember. Gotta be careful for that. Uh, tends to rip the uh, hydrilla out by the roots, which is a, a desirable effect. And here we come with our first load. That. And you just have to manually strip them off. There's your hydrilla right there. Stuff grows like crazy. Now once you get your wheelbarrow full, you can haul it off, find yourself a nice little spot in the woods or on the side of the property line or whatever and create a pile of it because it uh, decomposes down into a great compost. It's full of, uh, you know, pond weed is full of minerals and as that decomposes, you'll have some wonderful compost for your garden. Let's see, try another one. time consuming and the disadvantage is you can only get close to shore so once I've done this I have another method that requires a little more than just a wheelbarrow um, not everybody uh, has a backhoe but uh, I'm going to show you a technique that I use for the middle of the pond that uh, uses the backhoe and a raft See how effective that is. We've been doing it for a couple of years now and it does seem to be helping. So I'll show you how to use the raft method next. So the second method, if you happen to have a raft with a trolling motor on it, not a lot of people have that, and a backhoe is required for this. Uh, Quite a bit more equipment than your simple wheelbarrow, weed rake, and time. But uh, if you happen to have this, you can get out into the middle. And uh, what I've done is purchased one of those portable dumpster bags that you can order. And you fill it with junk at your house and they come pick it up, take it away. This is perfect for this application because it's got two heavy straps that I can uh, raise this up with the backhoe after it becomes full and it's also designed to let water pass through because if it's a dumpster in your backyard and it rains you don't want it full of water when they haul it away so I actually tried to use this as a tarp one time and it didn't work very well at all the water goes right through it so it lets the water drain out when you lift it all up and all the weeds you don't have to take all the water with you with the weeds and it fits perfectly on the back of the, uh, the, the raft here we call this the bass barge Go get some weeds.
good thing about it is you can kind of pull yourself around as you pick the weeds up and you're moving into new locations. You don't really have to use the trolling motor once you get out there. Not that thick in here this year. Which means last time I did it, well, there's, this, there's a snag. You know, it comes out crooked. That's what happens if you don't get a good throw. all the brown on the bottom of that, that's the roof. You want to get them up by the roof. There are some techniques that cut the trees down. And I get to retrieve them after they start floating. I like to pull them by the roof. Now we got a load on here. I'll show you how to get it off. You don't have a backhoe, maybe you have a front end loader with forks on it or even a fork truck. So this is option two for unloading. This, this thing is actually made for a fork truck. You can see it's got extra little loops right here that you can put, fit right over the, the forks. You know, I'll go itself. There you go. 